Welcome to What Is It About the Weather podcast, where we explore the many ways that weather intertwines itself into our lives. I'm your host, Mark Jelinek. This week, would you use weather as a therapy? Something to ponder before we get there. Hope your weather week went well. I had a couple things pop up this week, and actually, this is a topic that, you know, I considered before, but a couple of things happened in the weather world that pushed me in the direction of go ahead and doing it now. First, saw a lot of emotion cons this week. Tons of them that looked unhappy. It looked unhappy because people were hot. There's a bit of some of that deeper summer sort of temps that crept in a little early in the spring here in the U.S. in some places. And those you know who've been with the podcast well know that I also get outside, do some hiking, biking, those sort of things. There's an app I use for that called Strava. That you know, it's well, think of it as social media for athletes. I guess the best way I know not all of us are athletes that are using it by any means. But in any case, it's an app I use. I like. And what's interesting about the app is you know you're sharing exercise events, and you can't share video, so there's no way to kind of talk to people express that but they, they let you post pictures of you know a run or a uh, like I said going for a bike ride or whatever it might be so one of the pe- ways people try to express emotion is you know through emojis right and I watch people try to do it and some people do it well some people I could tell what they're trying to express but it got me to thinking about this whole connection that we've had before we've talked about weather. And I'm not a warm weather person, so I mean, I certainly relate to those people. But I think for some people, they'd be looking at those going, well, I don't understand. Why, why are you expressing that emotion sort of thing? And we've been through some of that. And we've been through it from a perspective of how weather influences or how weather impacts us. Now, the other thing that came up this week is the first tropical cyclone, technically I think it was Tropical Storm Anna, of the North Atlantic hurricane season. And I know I talked a little bit last week about the season changing. Just just to be clear, right, the technical hurricane season for this year, and it will likely change either next year or the year after, you know, part of it is a planning thing, it still starts on June 1st. But the agency that's responsible for the North Atlantic hurricane zone, if you will, or region, happens to be the National Hurricane Center. It sits in Miami, Florida, and they started issuing forecast earlier this year, which is kind of consistent with the season shift, and, and maybe they're testing it out sort of things. They started doing stuff on May 15th, which is usually when they start the East Pacific season forecast so it wasn't a big stretch and, and again I think they're just trying to work through that so even the news stories had you know before the season some had you know they were everybody was a little confused about it so again technically from you know reading through it the season's still there but it reminded me people were look it was like people were looking for that news it was it was interesting and it's not the first time sometimes we see it with severe events but in general it's like people wanted something else to grasp to toward, if you will, or migrate toward somewhere where to put their thoughts and their efforts. And we've talked about this topic a little bit, and I think we'll go there, you know, maybe again in the future, but the role weather plays just in our lives from a standpoint of why do we use it the way we do? Why do we all talk about it? And and again, not a new topic for us, but I was trying to think about it from a, of a standpoint. One of the episodes we did around the end of the year where I kind of did all these color-related episodes had to do with pink noise, right? And I kept thinking about these things, right? And I came back to, again, all these times that we've talked about this topic, we've talked about it from a standpoint of what does the weather do to us or how do you mitigate the challenges with it when we talked about being allergic to the cold, you know, what you can do to avoid that. But let's flip the script a little bit, all right, and think about it from a standpoint of what if you used it as the medicine or it as the therapy, right? What if weather was what made you feel better? Because we've talked about how it can potentially do that, but if you walked into a doctor's office and they said, what I want you to do 
is I want you to go, you know, listen to thunderstorm sounds or whatever it might be. I want you to go sit in the air in the morning, you know, go outside at sunrise before the world comes around and smell the air, whatever it might be. I want you to go spend six months in a cold weather climate. Again, who knows what they might say. Could be the reverse. I want you to go spend the next season. This winter, I want you to go try to spend a a winter in a warmer, drier, drier climate and see how it impacts you. Would you respond to that, right? And why would you or why wouldn't you? Now, I've mentioned how I use sound, and to me it is a type of therapy. I like listening to, you know, sounds of thunderstorms. But I think part of it is it invokes a certain thing for me. But I I think of it as realistically a therapy. Now, no doctor told me to do that. It's just something I kind of did on my own. And it's actually something we can all kind of do on our own. That one's an easy thing. There's even one, I, there was an app I found called Weather Therapy. Now that led into a whole different search. I'll, maybe I'll mention that next week. Kind of a funny scam that I came across. It's not funny. It was sad, really. But, you know, here it was. Somebody was actually using the words weather therapy together. But the idea, you can understand, right? It's how we take the weather and the world around us and incorporate it into our wellness factors, right? How we feel, how we think, how we go about life. And it really is, the idea there is, is again, taking weather, instead of seeing it as something that's an interrupter or an impact to our lives, which I'd be the first to acknowledge, it does those things. But by now, any of you who know me and listening to this podcast know that I, I tend to see it with a different perspective. I tend to see the positive and how it can be a, a great influence on our lives as well, how it can help us advance things. But from a medical standpoint, many of the podcasts that I've done have really relayed, while I might talk about positive connections at times, the way weather can impact the body. Now, I try to be a little more neutral and covering those, but I'd be the first to acknowledge that when most of the stories are written about how you, know, you might be allergic to cold or you might have weather, you know, thunderstorm asthma or one of those things, just in the name, it kind of implies a negativity, right? So there's two therapy ideas, neither which of them are brand new, that go kind of beyond just relaxing sounds. I wanted to really get into, and we've talked about some, you know, bio meteorology kind of things before. Is there something more to it? Right. So I'm going to start in the, in the show notes today, I'm, I'm going to give you two articles that can lead to two books. If this is a topic that really interests you, there's a lot of material to actually dig into and you can kind of make up your own mind. But one of them, this article started talking about the idea of ions. And we'll get to where that goes, and it kind of ties into thunderstorms and all that stuff as well. But they had an interesting quote that's not new. This is back from, I, I, you know, it either came out in the 1950s, 1960s. The, the quote was, Why do people often feel bad in good environments? And good and bad environments. And this gets to that idea of being excited that there's a hurricane. And why might you be that way? Right? So there's, for me as a meteorologist, who's maybe at a distance, even when watching it, I might be excited for just understanding what's going on and and marvel about how it goes on. And I've told you before, I, I do try to balance that because it's also a destructive event. Kills people, those sort of things. And other people, it works them up because maybe they have to warn people or look out for things, or maybe those in the storm's path have to go somewhere. But this author was relaying it in the context of, she was at work in a, in a mountainous region here in the U.S., eastern U.S., and the storm, she'd been out for a run, and the storm was coming. And she could see the storm. Now, she didn't know if it was a tornado or something else, but clearly looked dangerous, whether it was going to have hail or something else. It looked ominous. And she described it as as really feeling it. And in that sense, she relayed that 
you know, she ran in at a certain speed that she had never run at before for the two miles from where she was to home and never since then has been able to duplicate those speeds. So clearly there was an impact and it could have been as simple as adrenaline, of course, between the weather environment and how her body responded. But she found it invigorating. And so she really started looking into the idea of what might be, was there more to it? Was there some sort of connection more than just an adrenaline rush or some idea, you know, that, that can be harder to latch on to? And she came across something that, you know, some, a topic, I guess, I'm familiar with, which is the idea of negative ions, which there are certainly plenty of in thunderstorms. I mean, one of the things that creates lightning, right? is when you get a separation of, of positive and negative charged particles. And there was a book written back in, I want to say it was in the 70s, by an author named uh, Fred Soika, and it's called The Ion Effect. It's really that simple. And this is where I'm telling you this is book one. But the, the principle in The Ion Effect is if you load the air with negative ions, it's actually better for you because it helps attract other particles. Maybe it can take dust out of the air, but supposedly it, it can also make you feel better. And there have been experiments around this within the last 10 years that continue to suggest there's more to it that it, you know, so often with this stuff, you hear the word pseudoscience being used. And one of the challenges is a lot of things when it has to do with mental or brain components, they're not easy to prove. And the reality is the research is still out on this. A lot of people want to dismiss it out of hand. And they want to go to, you know, some drug you can build and create and throw in the body and measure very specific outcomes. But there are other therapies that we use that don't necessarily involve taking a medicine. There's light therapies. You, know, you even hear about even temperature-based therapies that kind of fall in that range. And so the articles, while on one hand seem to suggest it's plausible, still don't have a good explanation, right? They still haven't fully figured out. There's hypotheses. And the other tricky thing is one of the things, for instance, and, and you've heard me talk about ozone around thunderstorms and whatnot, or when lightning occurs, the ch one of the challenges with ozone is ozone can actually be bad for you. So you, it's not like you want to be go sucking on ozone because it can damage your lungs. It can actually scar them. But is there something to it? And I, you know, I remembered when I was doing more traveling for business back in the the you know late eighties, early nineties, that I went to a convention somewhere. And it, it, you know, this is the thing: I would do conventions, business conventions, and every so often you'd have a few things that just didn't have anything to do with the convention. And quite often they were the latest fad at the time. I remember one of them being the the you know the dot pictures where you had to kind of blur a little bit to see the three D image. This was kind of cool. Had this other thing that was a massage thing. It was kind of neat. But one of them was ion stuff. And because I was at a medical thing, it was, you know, it was like loosely related, but their whole thing was, you know, for me, I've always been focused on humidity indoors and what's a comfortable level for me. But they were trying to push this eye and you don't need to worry about humidity. And I even remember getting a follow-up call from the salesperson and, you know, him saying, well, you know, blah, you know they had this whole sales pitch. And, and, you know, I didn't go for that, of course, but the idea was interesting. Now, what they have found is those ion generators, and they're still sold today probably don't create enough of whatever it is to be all that helpful. And the research that was done suggests that meh, maybe you'd really have to have a lot for it to be useful. That said, there's a lot to it. And so, you know, something to think about. If you walked into a doctor and they said, I wanted you to try ion therapy. I mean, we try all sorts of other things. Would you go for it? And another one I came across had to do with cold. And this isn't a new thing either, right? Most of us have heard about people going and doing polar bear swims, as they're called, right? We go and jump in really cold water and take a swim. And these people always talk about how wonderful it makes them feel. And again, I came across an article, somebody who was interviewing a person who ultimately wrote a book. This was a person who went to cover the idea, went and saw someone who was really promoting the idea not being skeptical 
And in the end, changing their whole lifestyle, moved from where they were living to a place where they could experience that and really bought into it. Once they understood it, they found it useful for them, right? And there are, as we discussed for people that are allergic to cold, there's a real thing there. Cold weather definitely, it dilates our blood vessels. It, for me, I've always found it invigorating. You know, whenever I'm tired, if I can get some, a blast of cold air, it makes me feel good. It's one of the things like, it's like rolling the window down when you're tired and you're driving, right? You want to get a, an alert. It's great in the winter time. It's cause it's almost, it's like a shock to the system. Now you don't want to do it in a stupid way, right? But it's the idea of it. And, and there's a, again, a person who's kind of focused on this. His name's Wim Hof. And I think he's Dutch, if I'm remembering correctly. And he goes in the whole idea of what we're really talking about here. And it, you know, the ideas of being able to climb mountains in your underwear and feel good, not feel crazy. And his whole thing is about control, understanding what it does to your body, how to control it, but using it as a, a, a method to kind of get you going in the morning, as an example, or invigorating you in a way that makes you feel positive and, in, you know, in balance with the world around you, those sort of things. And given that I'm somebody who doesn't like the heat to begin with, I, yeah, I can understand that. But I also, I, I do have an understanding from personal experiences in my life of watching how heat can be debilitating to people with certain conditions, right? And so the idea of cold therapy, to me, it sounds plausible and it sounds logical. So if I walked into a doctor's office and they said, what I want you to do, and, and this is a thing right now, cryotherapy, right? For different reasons. Some people are using it for how their body looks. It's fine. I, I don't care how you're using it, but would you use? But if someone said, go spend a, you know, a year living in the Nordic countries and get up every day and go for a cold water swim. Go lay in the snow in just your underwear. <laughs> would you do those things? Or what would it take? I think that's the other thing we, we look into. And I don't think this is just about either one of these things I mentioned. I think it's that way about a lot of things. We, you know, it's one thing to say, oh, I'm going to take something for pain relief. And some people don't like even using pain relievers. And I get that. So why put something in our body we don't fully understand? But we do it all the time. We don't fully understand most things that we put in our body. And the impacts of all this, you know, many of the foods we eat and stuff that's been dictated through you know, I don't want to say clever marketing, but a lot of marketing over the years that isn't necessarily consistent with how humans existed a thousand years ago before there were all the modern world things around us. But I am curious, if you walked into a doctor's office today and they said, do this with the focus being on this type of weather, would you try it? What would it take for you to try it? Let me know. What is it about the weather at gmail.com? You can find me there on Twitter as well. Of course, if you want to reach me individually, Mark underscore Jelinek. I'd like to know if you were presented with weather as a therapy, as opposed to thinking of it as a cause of something. If it was presented to you as a, this will help you feel better. Would you give it a try? Might you find it lower risk than some other methods of therapy. Let me know your thoughts. Maybe is with all things, like I said, I'm not recommending these things to anybody. Maybe if you want to start with something though, I did come across an article that went into expressing yourself with weather, right? There's a link in the show notes so you can go there. It's a step in the therapy direction, right? It's using weather as a way to under, you know, maybe relate how you feel and how your emotions change over time. Interesting exercise. L much lower risk and maybe something to give a try to. Because it's got to be better than, I, you know, I, I wouldn't want to be recommend a cold weather therapy and then go out and do an ultra marathon like 21 people who perished this past week in an ultra marathon in China. It's incredible. So with all these things, you know, what would it take? I think it's always about understanding the, the risk and, and potential reward. 
any case, I hope weather finds itself intertwining its way positively into your life. Maybe you use weather as a therapy every day and don't even think about it. Maybe listening to this podcast in and of itself is a method of therapy for you. Like I said, let me know. Would love to hear from you. But until then, and until we speak again, don't ever forget there's much more weather than the weather itself. <laughs>